Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We want to invite you to stand to your feet. If you're watching online, turn the volume up. Let's worship together. Come on. Can sing. I know, right? How you doing? 
How you Sorry. Doing? Look at you, man. You look really good. You finally got on board with the all black. I like it. Looks Hides good. my Thanksgiving fat. Oh. Yep. Everybody in here with black on just went. Is this the uh, place to <laughs> repent of gluttony? Yeah, this is it. Right here. And they go, that's why they call it Black Friday? No. Not? I don't think. I think you're just confusing us now. Sorry. Yeah. How do we get here? <laughs> Happy post Thanksgiving. I, I said, uh, had, how, asked somebody this morning, how was your Thanksgiving? They said, it was great. Did you remember to set your scales back 15 pounds? I went, yes. I am Jason. This is Ryan. We are glad you are here. If you are joining us here in our worship center or online, thank you so, so much. We are excited uh, to worship Jesus today. If it is the first time that you are joining us or if it's your first time in a while, we want to know that so we can communicate with you. we got a really, really helpful uh, digital gift uh, that we want to send you. Um, would you please text the word GUEST to our automated info number that is on the screen? Or if you're here in person, go right across the lobby to our guest services table and say, Hey, I need to fill out one of those new guest cards. That's it. It's your turn. <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, as a part of your worship today, if you are interested in giving towards what God is doing here at OBC, man, there are so many incredible life story change things that gospel is just doing what only the gospel can do in people's lives around here. And we would love for you to be on board with that. You can uh, give in a couple of different ways. There's a giving kiosk located out in the lobby. There'll be some ushers at the door as you leave today. And also, you can always give on our website or our mobile app at any point during the week. So thankful for a church that is generous and a church that is uh, missional and a church that believes in prayer. Uh, man, it is enough to pray about, isn't it? And uh, we want to know how to pray for you. So it doesn't matter uh, if it's for you, if it's somebody for somebody else. Uh, would you please let our prayer team know how we can be praying for you? Uh, you can do that digitally on our website or on our app. You can go to our prayer area uh, in the lobby, and uh, somebody will pray for your request uh, today. That is really such an important part uh, of what we do. And man, another important part of what we do no, this time of year. Absolutely, absolutely. We have gotten Thanksgiving out of the way. We have eaten more than we ever cared to admit. And now it is time for us to start to get into the holiday season and to start celebrate Christmas. Yes. No pun intended. But we actually do something every year called Celebrate Christmas where we get together as a church body one last time right before the holiday season, man. And we just go all out and we just celebrate the reason that we get to celebrate Christmas. We have a couple of different show options for you this year. We have it on Friday night, Saturday night, and then two on Sunday morning during our normal service times. And then those Friday and Saturday night, that's at seven o'clock. This is a great bringing opportunity. If you have someone to bring with you that normally wouldn't attend church, man, tag them along. Just say, hey, I'll buy you dinner. Come with me to celebrate Christmas. It's a great thing for sure. And it is a great thing to continue to worship Jesus. Jesus today. Everybody stand up, look at somebody near you and say, happy Black Sunday.
Good morning. If we would just continue in our time of worship and bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. Uh, Lord, we just want to be mindful uh, as we come off of this season of thanksgiving. Uh, Lord, that we are aware of who you are. Uh, Lord, your gracious gift to us in your son, Jesus. Lord, let us just be aware of the sacrifice that he made for us, uh, Lord, so that we can have a personal relationship with you. Uh, Lord, let us, just let us be thankful for that for that opportunity, uh, Lord, that you want to know us each personally, uh, Lord, that you afford us uh, the opportunity of that relationship, Lord. Thank you for loving us, for caring for us, uh, and for providing that to us, Lord. Lord, as we continue in this time of worship, uh, Lord, let us just lean in. Uh, Lord, let us be aware of your presence in our lives, uh, Lord, for the opportunity for that relationship with you. Lord, let us lift you up in this music and in this song and in these words. Uh, Lord, let us lean into your message for us, Lord. Uh, Lord, let your words uh, be preached, Lord, so that we are taught, so that we're convicted, uh, so that we're encouraged. Um, Lord, let us find hope in you. Uh, Lord, in the battles that we face, let us know that you're there with us. Lord, that you guide, direct, encourage that you give us strength to overcome things that we cannot do on our own. Lord, we trust you in that, and your word tells us that you are there for us in those moments, Lord. In times of sickness, in times of health, uh, Lord, you are there. You are always there. Lord, guide and direct us for the rest of this day, Lord. Help us yield uh, to your presence in our lives, Lord. Let us be aware of you. Uh, Lord, let us seek you out. Lord, just help us as we continue to try to grow in our relationship with you. Uh, Lord, just let us be mindful of your presence in our lives. Uh, Lord, let us be desperate for that relationship with you uh, and what comes from that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have today, for this time of worship, uh, for this time of instruction, for this time of prayer. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for all of that, Lord. Lord, continue to be with us in this time of worship, Lord. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We will continue to worship. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. It's all creation grown. Is a new creation coming? It is. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. is it good that we remind ourselves of this?
more plump, but that's okay. That's what Thanksgiving's about. Uh, welcome to our OBC family online. We are so glad you've all joined us today. Uh, you know, the day before Thanksgiving, man, I was, man, my RPMs are up. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, man, I'm, I am ready for Thanksgiving. So I'm sneaking into the honey baked ham and eating little pieces and just like, get out of there, get out of there. I'm eating little chunks of, you know, the um, sweet potato casserole. Those little, I'm taking those marshmallows and just boop, throw them up me. Throw me. I, I'm eating everything I can get my hands on, man, but I'm trying to sneak, you know. But then comes Thanksgiving, and man, I go neck deep. You know what I'm talking about? I um, mean, yeah, I eat everything in sight. But about two days later, by about Saturday, I was done. You know what I mean? I don't want no more turkey. I don't want no turkey sandwich. I don't want any more sweet potato casserole. I don't want any more pecan pie. Well, maybe some pecan pie. But I'm done. I mean, I'm ready to clean out the fridge, right? Because all of that wonderful Thanksgiving celebration, it just didn't seem to matter so much anymore. A lot of things are like that in life, right? Big deal, not so big a deal. Hey, aren't you glad about this? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ always matters. Isn't that a big deal? 
So today we're week four in our series called Church It Matters. Last week we talked about giving. Today we're going to talk about serving. Because giving and serving, boy, are always close to Jesus' heart. In fact, look, look at this verse here in Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You, you, you see how giving and serving both come together at the cross in an incredible way? Because on the cross, we get this picture of the Savior who is giving his life and at the same time serving us by bearing our sin. What an incredible moment at the cross. And the night before the cross, when Jesus gathered his disciples together in the upper room, and he's gathering them together, and this is the last face-to-face -face instruction he's going to give to these 12. And he knew that the cross was here. It's time. In fact, in John's gospel, you get this real clear picture. Look, look at this. Um, so in John 22, 4, my hour is not yet come. In 7, 30, his hour is not yet come. In 8, 20, uh, his hour is not yet come. Then you get to chapter 13, verse 1. Jesus knew that his hour was come. Now is the time. And you know what Jesus did? He decided to teach the 12 about serving. So in the context, they're in the upper room. Uh, they're celebrating uh, the Passover feast. Remember when Jesus started his ministry? Remember when John the Baptist saw him? He was coming to get baptized. And John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Passover Lamb. And now Jesus is here. Now Jesus will become the final Passover Lamb. Now, his hour has come. You know what the disciples are doing there in the upper room to begin with? They're arguing over who's the greatest. Oh, I, well, I did this with Jesus. And no, well, but I did this with Jesus. And Peter, you know, well, I walked on water. Y'all got anything to beat that? I mean, they did all the, you, me, I am, not you, I, I'm the greatest. And right in the middle of all that, Jesus takes on the humble role of a servant and gives us this amazing model to follow. So here's some things to remember about serving Jesus. Here's the first thing. Serving is the clearest way to show the love of Jesus. John 13, 1. Uh, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. Boy, those are powerful words, aren't they, about the love of Jesus. You see how serving and loving always go together. And when we serve, it's demonstrating the love of Jesus. So Jesus taught us to serve, and because we love Jesus, we obey him and serve. Now, here's what happens. Jesus uses our service to meet someone else's need. I mean, that, that sounds like Jesus, right? That sounds like he, he, that's how he desires his church to operate. One person's service meets another person's need. So God kind of Gets on you, hey, you need to do this. You need to serve in this way. And this person over here has a need. You end up meeting their need. And then you, God gets to use you to serve, and then you meet their need. And then you serve and meet their need. That's how God designed his church. It's a great picture of why the church matters so much. So here's a question we should ask ourselves. Who is on the other side of your obedience to serve? Because when you serve, it's going to meet somebody's need that you may not even know about. Maybe you know about it. Maybe it's directly to them. But maybe it's in a way you don't even know about. 
Because God desires to meet their need through you. Somebody is always waiting on the other side of your obedience to serve Jesus. And when you don't, God will still meet their needs, but you're going to miss the blessing. It's a great plan, really. You know, God uses one person's service to meet another person's need. You know, there's just one problem. Our sin nature. You see, our sin nature says, I want to love, but I don't want to serve. Do you love Jesus? Oh, I love Jesus. We'll serve him. Ah, you know, I don't really have time. I mean. You know, maybe, maybe sometime. See, our sin nature says, I can love Jesus, but I don't have to serve Jesus. Have you ever been there? You know, kind of in that uneasy territory uh, between what I know I should do and what I actually do. Ever been there? You, you see, it's obeying God's plan, not just knowing God's plan to serve that matters most in our life. Serving and loving always go together. But our sin nature says, I can love without serving uh, the people that I, I love, um, but it's okay for the people that I love to serve me. I mean, it happens in marriage all the time, right? Hey, babe, I love you so much. Could you bring me some tea? Right? Hey, babe, you're the best wife in the world. Hey, could you go back and get me some chips and salsa? Right? I mean, it happens in church all the time. People who love God's church the most serve God's church the most. People who just love what God's church does for them serve the least. It's always true. I've always found this to be true, too. In church, people who serve the least complain the most. Well, how come y'all don't do this? Well, why don't you do that? Well, why don't you do it this way? Well, I wish you'd do that, and, you know, you didn't do this. You know, what y'all should do is, hmm, get that all the time. All right, so if you're listening, say amen. amen. Don't come to me and tell me what we ought to do if you're doing nothing. Got it? Give me an amen. amen. All right. However, I want to tell you something. When you're serving Jesus, and man, you, I just see you using your gifts in the body, and, and you come and you say to me or somebody on the staff, hey, have you thought about me? We're all ears. We're all ears. You know why? Because you're serving already, so you see the needs, and it's usually about somebody else, not about you. But when you serve the least, complain the most. When you complain, it's complaining because we're not doing enough for you. Hmm. So, if you love your Savior, serve him. If you love Jesus' church, serve Jesus' church. There's another thing we learned from Jesus there in the upper room about serving. When we show up to serve, Satan shows up to steal. Look what happens in chapter 13, verse 2. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. You know, every time I read that verse, it always amazes me, you know, that after being with Jesus for three years, Simon was that vulnerable to the attacks of Satan. That, that Judas was just that vulnerable. But the Bible says clearly that, man, he never was with Jesus. He, he always was about himself. When I read that, it just grieves my soul that they're in that room when Jesus is pouring out his heart as a servant. Satan is there deceiving Judas' mind. So let me just remind you, Satan is real. Satan is powerful. Satan is a deceiver. Satan doesn't play fair. He hates you. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to steal your faith. John 10.10 10 says, The thief, that Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Man, that's where you go, yes. Because when I have my focus on Jesus, when Jesus has my heart, 
You know what happens? Satan is powerless to kill, steal, and destroy in my life. But, but when my focus is me and not Jesus, you, you know what Satan does? He just tempts our flesh. He sells us a lie and we buy it. He destro- destroys our confidence in God and his word. And he steals God's plan for our life. Mm. So they're there in the upper room. A few hours later, they go to the Mount of Olives in a garden there. And Jesus goes off to pray. And he just asks his disciples, will you please just watch and pray three times? Three times they fall asleep. Huh. You know, just look at this. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray, Jesus said, that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm. Have you learned this yet in life? The desire of the flesh, the power of the flesh, will overpower the determination of the will every time. Let me prove it to you. How many of y'all have ever said... That's the last time. That's the last time I'm going to. That's the last time I'll ever. Was it? You, you see, here's why. In our own strength, in our own determination, in our own will, the spirit is willing. See that? Notice it's a small case S in spirit. That's the human spirit, not the Holy Spirit. The human spirit is willing. I mean, how many times in your life have you been willing? God, I want to with all my heart, but you don't. Why? Because the flesh is weak, and the flesh will overpower the, our own will and determination every time. And only in the power of the Holy Spirit can we overcome our own flesh. And that's what Satan is doing here, to tempt them. Mm. So let me just give you a little warning. When you show up to serve, Satan shows up to steal. So be ready. Set your heart on Jesus. Focus on the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Otherwise, you become very vulnerable to the lies of Satan. Here's another thing we learned from Jesus about serving. (laughs) Serving doesn't deny authority but reveals humility. You know, two things that are easy to confuse is authority and pride. Because you can have authority in your life. You can be in a position at work or in your family where you have authority. But if that turns to pride, that can get ugly in a minute. You you, you see, all authority is delegated authority. All authority comes from God to us. And the way we use that authority is a big deal in our lives. God doesn't give authority for selfish pride. God gives authority to lead other people well. So look at chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything. Well, that about covers it, right? Uh, How much authority do you have? Everything. Uh, What do you have authority over? Everything. That's a big deal, right? Jesus doesn't deny his authority. He said, all authority has been given to me. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. He's got the authority. He's got the power, baby. Now look what happens. Look what he does with it. Verse 4. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Wow. So in, in the first century, uh, there in, in Judea, um, you know, people were clean, people washed, um, but they walked everywhere they went for the most part, and they wore open shoes, sandals, and it was a dusty, kind of arid uh, climate. So um, their feet were always dusty and dirty just from walking. So it was was, uh, customary that when you went into somebody's home, 
Uh, if they had a servant, the servant would come and wash their feet, uh, kneel down, get a basin of water, get a towel, wash their feet and dry it. And um, because your feet were dirty, you don't want to track all that dirt in people. So it was a very common thing, but it was also a way to show a servant's heart. Now remember, man, these, <laughs> Jesus gets down to wash their feet. These aren't pedicured lily nails feet. You know what I'm talking about? These are nasty, gnarly fishermen feet. Feet are nasty, by the way. I don't like them. I don't want to get near them. I wouldn't get near my own if I didn't have to. But Jesus, who has all authority, becomes a servant. You see, Jesus didn't deny his authority. He just showed his humility. He used his authority to show his humility. You know, everybody, I don't care who you are, you have a certain measure of authority. Maybe at school, maybe at work, maybe at home. I don't, I mean. So then there's a real question, right? How do we use our authority? Whatever measure of it we have. You see, because everybody uses their authority one of two ways, for one of two reasons. For humility to serve other people or pride to serve myself. Hmm. Here's another thing we learn from Jesus there in the upper room about serving. The source of our service is the heart of our Savior. John 13, verse 6. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Now, he, this was real humility, I think. I don't think Peter was um, asking uh, in an accusative way, are you going to wash my feet? I think Peter was asking in an inquisitive way, humbly, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Look what happens. Mm. Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. And look what Peter says. No, Peter protested, you'll never, ever wash my feet. So now, that fast, his humility turns to pride. No, 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 Jesus, no. You're not going to wash my feet ever, no. Boy, that's a quick turnaround, isn't it? Look what Jesus said. Jesus replied, unless I wash your feet, you won't belong to me. Bam. Bam. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. I mean, Peter's saying, man, uh, uh, what, what? I mean, if, you, well, if it means I can't be yours, man, here, give me a bath, wash everything. And look what happens in verse 10. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said not all of you are clean. So Jesus goes from talking about the feet to talking about the heart. He tells, tells Peter, you don't really understand what I'm doing right now, but you're going to. See, because within hours, he'd be hanging on a cross. Because he knew only the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. And man, you can have clean feet and a dirty heart. And there's not enough water on planet earth to wash a sinful heart. Only the blood of Jesus. That's why. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You see, the heart of Jesus is always the cross. And the source of the disciples' service was the heart of the Savior, the cross. That's why we serve. That, that's why we say, Jesus 
Because of all you've done for me, I know what my heart was. I know I was dead in my trespasses and sin, but you saved me and you cleansed me and you forgave me and you made me a new person. That's what the cross does. And when we get that, man, we want to serve in response because after everything Jesus has done for us, is there anything we wouldn't do for him? But man, then our sin nature kicks in and we get in the weeds with stuff, man. So let me give you a couple clues about what could happen when you serve. In fact, I guarantee it's going to happen. Uh, when you serve, first, don't let someone else's attitude derail you. Jesus is serving the disciples. He's washing their feet. Peter said, oh, no, you're not serving me. I wonder if Jesus would have said, fine, I won't. Go to the cross yourself. Nah, that's not what he did, was it? He was patient and humble. But look, I'm telling you, I promise you this. When you get serious about serving Jesus, Jesus is going to ask you to serve people with lousy attitudes. They won't appreciate it. They won't think you're doing enough. They won't think you're doing it the right way. It's irritating. Has that ever happened to you? You try to do something really nice for somebody and they go, well, well, couldn't you have done this? Or why don't you do that? So can I remind you of something really obvious? That's exactly what we do to Jesus. But Jesus, did you have to do it that way? Jesus, won't you just do this for me? Jesus, why do I have to go through that? But Jesus, who has all authority, doesn't get irritated with us. He just serves us. So remind yourself, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for Jesus. So don't let their attitude derail your service. Here's another thing. Don't forget it's a short trip from humility to pride. Jesus said, or Peter said, you're not washing my feet. Right before that, he says, are you going to wash my feet? Right. Look, if we're not careful, what begins as humble service can quickly end as prideful defeat. I've seen it many, many times being a pastor, man. Somebody gets all jacked up about Jesus and serving Jesus, and they can't wait, and they start serving Jesus, then somebody gives them an attitude, and they get their feelings hurt. Well, I'm just not doing it anymore. Wow, what if Jesus did that, man? Don't let service with humility become pride and defeat. One more thing. We serve Jesus by serving other people. John 13, 12 says... After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? Uh, you call me teacher and Lord, and you're right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. Huh. Hey, if Jesus is Lord of all and does it, who do we think we are, right? Look at verse 15. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is a messenger uh, more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Boy, isn't that great? I mean, Jesus is saying, when you serve, man, you're acknowledging the lordship of Jesus. I'm doing this because of what Jesus has done for me. We are following the example of Jesus. He said, do like I've done. And then we receive the blessing. That's what he said when you do it. 
God will bless you for doing it. Hmm. So what does it look like to serve God here in his church at OBC? Um, all kinds of ways, man. You just, you just can't even believe all the serving it takes just to make Sunday morning happen. Man, our production team, everything you see, everything you hear, it wouldn't happen without them. It takes dozens of people just to make it happen. From the time you come on the campus, there are parkers, there are greeters, there are ushers, uh, preschool ministry, elementary school ministry, middle school ministry, high school ministry, prayer ministry, celebrate recovery ministry, grief share ministry, worship ministry, teaching ministry, preaching ministry, connection groups, mission trips, Rockingham Hope to feed people who need food. I mean, there are so many ways we serve. It takes hundreds and hundreds of people serving just to make happen what happens here. And there are many, many more than the ones I mentioned. So look, if you're serving now, God bless you. Praise God. Please don't stop. Your service matters more than you think, and your service is meeting the need of another person, even if you don't see it. Now, when we finish our building, we're going to need a lot more people serving. And I'm going to ask you to do it. Please help us. Which brings up a great question. When will the building be finished? Sometime before Jesus comes, I think. <laughs> no, honestly, man. So we've had all these supply chain issues and like the front of the building, which is going to be new preschool and children's space. Um, we can't get roofing material. And, and we've been waiting for months and months and months. They can't get it. Nobody even knows when they can get it. So it looks like probably instead of end of December, January for the front of the building, it's probably going to be May, somewhere around there, if we can get building material. Um, I've had so many people ask me, um, well, when are we going to get roofing material? When are we going to get roofing material? I... So my answer is the same that when people ask me, when is Jesus coming back? Because it's the same answer, right? Could be tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe a few months. Could be a few years. I don't know. Just be ready. It's the same answer, right? So we don't know. But pray for roofing material. But there is a need right now for servants of Jesus here in our church. So... Our connection groups, our small groups, are a huge part of what God's doing here. It's where people care for each other. It's where people connect. It's people, that's where people do all the one another's in the Bible. And here's what we need. We need connection group leaders. That's one of the casualties of COVID. I don't know that I really understand all of that, but it's like people who are leading a group just said, nah, I don't want to do it anymore. I get it, man. Sometimes you need a break. But we need group leaders, and we need them badly. And you know what I believe? There are group leaders sitting in this room right now. And you're thinking, oh, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can do that. You might be surprised. Well, let me tell you how you can find out. Uh, contact Jason Barrow. And on December the 7th, this, this coming month, and December the 19th, we're going to have connection group leader training. And if you'll just sign up for that and come, won't take much of your time. Man, you'll find out what it requires, and, and I guarantee you're going to be amazed that you can do it and do it well. If you will, please help us. Look, church matters because the church is Jesus' way of meeting people's needs every day. Please. Ask God to give you a heart of a servant. Ask him to show you where he wants you to serve. And then humbly obey him. And the scripture says, if you do, God will bless you for it. Father, thank you for your great love. Thank you, God, that uh, because of your love, you gave us your life and you serve us. Lord, help us to follow your model. To not just love you, God, but to serve you. And I believe, Lord, there are people here right now, people watching on our live stream. And it's the next step for them, God, in their walk with you to become a servant. 
So God, please speak to them. And Lord, all of those who want to start serving for the first time, Lord, just, just kind of prompt them right now to get in contact with us. God, please let them know right now that there's all kinds of ways to serve you in your church. And they'll be blessed for it. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's stand and worship. God bless you. We hope you have a great week.